Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying Amos chapter 9, that is the prophet Amos Perak Tess. This is Saul Weiner, the host for your podcast. In the last several chapters, we've listened to prophecies of destruction and prophecies of rebuke of the people for their corruption and for their oppression of the poor. And we also learned that although Amos was able to avert the decree of utter destruction, he was not able to avert the decree that the people needed to be punished. Um, And yet God had promised that the punishment was not going to be complete and total, but it was going to be just, and that that the people ultimately would survive. We're going to continue on that theme now. Uh, Chapter 9, which is the final chapter of Amos, is going to start with very strong and uh, frightening words of destruction, but they will also end on a note of consolation. So let's start with verse 1, chapter 9. I saw a vision of God Nitzav al Hamizbeach sitting or standing, I'm sorry, at at the altar of the of the uh, of the temple. This image of God standing at the altar we have many cases in among the prophets where the vision is of God st- standing in the Heichal, one uh, which is the uh, the temple, the holy place of the temple. Um, uh, we had it in Isaiah where God was sitting in the temple when he had his vision in cha- Isaiah chapter six, the vision where he was called to prophecy. So it's a uh, it's a common theme. However, um, Rashi and the uh, points out and based on the words of the rabbis in the Talmud that um, that the fact that God was speaking from the altar and not speaking from the inside, the inner sanctum, the holy of holies, was a sign that God was slowly leaving and taking His presence, so to speak, out of the temple. It was a symbol that instead of speaking from the inner sanctum, I'm. Sp- I'm on my way out, so to speak. I'm still in the temple, but I'm leaving. Um, so this is part of the image of, of destruction. But he's still in the temple, which is part of the image of consolation. Vayomer, and he said, what did God say? He said as follows, Hach ha kaftor, strike the um, kaftor. The kaftor is like uh, the ball. If, if you think of an of a ancient uh, po- a post, a capital, that's a, one of those large beams that supports the roof. It was very common to have like a, 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 me, a stone ball at the bottom of it. And that's what it means, strike that ball, because if you strike that out, then then the, then the capitals, or the, which is a word for these large cement posts that held up the roof, will start to shake. And they will all completely, uh, for, it will begin by destroying the temple. That is what I'm going to start begin by doing and then the last of them the last of the remaining people after I start by destroying the temple the remaining people I am going to I'm going to kill them with a sword in other words by an attack of the enemy no one will be able to escape by running away there will not be refugees that survives we will see soon that he's not talking about the entire people but he's talking about the evil people if they try to dig themselves deep down into the depths of hell, from there my hand will reach down and grab them. If they try to climb to the heavens, from there I'll bring them down. These are all obviously metaphorical way of speaking that no one will be able to escape justice. If they try to hide on the top of the lush green mountains, try to hide in the woods, so to speak, I will search them out of the woods, and I will take them. And if they try to hide from my sight, at the bottom of the sea, I will send my sea serpents down there to bite them. And if they go into captivity before their, 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 their enemies come, even as they're taken into captivity, I will make sure that the sword comes and kills them there too. I will place my eyes upon them, my gaze upon them, but for evil in order to punish them, not for good in order to reward them. This is all quite horrible. I'm not going to go into too much 
discussion of this, but God's justice is harsh, and He is promising that this justice is going to come. And the Lord our God, the God of hosts, the God of everything, it's the one who can touch the land, and the land will tremble upon His just his bare touch of Luke and just a tiny tiny dose of God's wrath will cause all the entire universe to mourn and it will come up and this is the same language that we had in the previous chapter and it will rise like the Nile River when it floods it will just rise and just flush away everything and it will and it will and it will, um, and it will rise and fall like the river Nile of Egypt the God who builds his 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 um, buildings, his chambers, his rooms, or his steps in heaven, the one who places his aguda, his his gathering places, his place where he puts his things, he establishes on the land. Hakori Lemeayam, the one who so powerfully calls to the waters of the sea by Ishbachem al Pneart, and to make them pour out in a tsunami upon the earth. Adonai Shemol, God is his name. This next verse is, is um, saying, he's talking about punishing the corrupt uh, people of Israel. So he says, now he's saying, you, Israel was special, right? That they, they think of themselves, and they are, the people that were chosen by God to carry his message to the world. But God says that when you're acting this way, when you're acting corrupt like this, Verse 7, Then you are to me just like every other nation, just like the Ethiopians. B'nai Israel are the sons of Israel, no Madonai, says God. You're not special anymore. If you don't keep the laws and if you don't live justly and you don't live righteously, then you're just like every other nation, which deserves punishment when they're corrupt. Hello, as Israel, behold, yes, it is true that I took the Israelites out of Egypt. But I also, I took the Philistines from the Kaftor. I'm not exactly sure where Kaftor is, but it's known that the Philistines um, were, were, uh, came and settled the land from, from across the sea. Uh, they came from somewhere else. We know this archaeologically. We know this from historically. And the Arab people, of the Arameans, they came from a place called Kir. In other words, you're not the only nation that I brought from place to place. You're not the only nation that I gave a land to and established in their land. And just like they, when they're corrupt, will be punished, so too you, if you're corrupt, you will be punished. Don't try to use the trump card. Oh, we're the chosen people, don't destroy us. You deserve punishment like them all. The eyes of God, the Lord our God, are now looking at this sinful kingdom. The kingdom specifically connotes the leaders that are corrupt. Vishmadtio, so I'm going to destroy this kingdom. May Alpani Adama from the face of the earth. Ephes, however, and here God flips to a little bit more of a con- conciliatory note. Kilo Hashmeid Hashmidas Bas Yaakov. I will not completely and utterly destroy the house of Jacob, no Madonai. I'm going to destroy this kingdom, this kingdom that is corrupt, but I'm not going to destroy the children of Jacob. The people of Jacob will still live. Because what am I going to do, God says, I'm going to command as follows, I'm going to shake the, the people of Israel among and scatter them among all of the nations. I'm going to remove this kingdom and scatter the people everywhere. And, and during this process of exile, it's going to be a process of purification. Just like when one shakes a sieve or a sifter, and it sifts out the fine flour and the pebbles and rocks don't fall through the sifting and thus you separate the good from the bad that is how I'm going to scatter all the people throughout all of the nations and, and sift out the good from the bad this is for 10 by the sword shall die all of the sinners of my nation the sinners who were so arrogant to Omrim that said, Lo tagish that we are so great that evil can't befall us. I'm going to show you, God, where that arrogance is going to take you. Because the sinners will die. The, the sifter will sift the good from the bad. Bayomahu on that day, Alkimet Sukato Vidano Felet. I am going to reestablish the sukkah, the, the, the hut, the fallen hut of King David, the, um, which was once there to protect the people of Jerusalem and the people of, of, of Israel. 
I'm going to reestablish that. I'm going to fix all of the bro- bro- broken walls. Baharisa Sovakim and all of the ruins I will reestablish and rebuild to Vinicia and I shall build it Kime Olam like the old days, like the days of David and Solomon, like the days the, the, the good old days, so to speak. So God is saying, I will reestablish, I will bring them back. <coughs> Leman in this verse twelve Leman Yirshu at Shehiris at Dom Vachalagayim in order that um, that they shall inherit the remainders of the people of Edom and all of the nations Asher Nikrash Mialeim that I called my name out upon them No Madunai So says God O says O's the one who is going to do this Now this last verse verse 12 has many different possible ways to interpret it because there are some significant difficulties here when it says in order that they sh- will inherit the, the remainders of the people of Edom it sounds like he's saying that they, meaning the Jewish people, will inherit the those nations that remain, the ones Asher Nikrash Mialam, the ones who who call by the name of God. In other words, that future day of destruction. The interesting thing about this, though, is that there was no reference until this point of God destroying the nations. Now we know from many other places that in the future God will destroy the nations that were evil and save the nations that are humble before God in the future. But that's not what Amos was talking about. So if that's what the Pasuk means, then we miss the whole context. There's no context here. Um, so some, and, and the other problem is, is in order that it, God is complimenting these people, saying, Asher Nikrash Mi Aleham, the ones who, who, who called, who my name has been called out upon them. In other words, to say that they're good people, so why would they be the ones that are inherited? They're the ones that should be rewarded. There's many different explanations um, of this pasuk in the commentaries, uh, but I would like to read this a little differently in a way that it really fits better in the context. And what if the Sheiris Edom does not refer to the remaining people of Edom of the other and the other nations, but rather it's referring to those that remain of those that were scattered among Edom and all of the nations. I just talked to you before that I'm going to scatter the people of Israel among all the nations. And now I'm saying that I'm going to reestablish the house of David in order that those that are left from Edom and from all the nations, those that are left, those that were scattered but remain, those that weren't killed, because God just said that I'm going to kill the evil ones, so those that remain, and those are the people that I shared Nikrashmi Aleim, that my name has been called upon them, those remnants will come and re-inherit the land, so says God, and this fits very well with what's about to come, because what's going to happen in those days, Hinei Yamim Ba'im, this is verse 13, there are days coming, no Madonai says God, Vinigash Chores Dakotzer, that the, the, the uh, this is, I'm interpreting according to Rashi, that this is so, um, the, the, the bounty of the harvest will be so great that the one who's plowing the field will meet the guy who's harvesting the field because he's harvesting and plowing. The, har- the plowing is the beginning of the time and the, the harvesting is the end of the time of growing the crops. But there's, they're going to be growing and cutting and, and plowing all at the same time. Vidorech Hanavim and the one that that crushes the grapes, which is the end of the process of growing grapes for wine. But Moshe Chazorah, he's going to meet the guy who's planting the seeds of the grapes. That's how bountiful the harvest will be. And the mountains are going to drip with wine. And all of the high places and hills will be waving with waves of waves of grain growing. And those that return to me of the nation of Israel, I'm going to return them to their land. This is the continuation of what I said, that those that remain from this long exile or then they are the ones that are going to come back and they're going to build the cities that have been destroyed and resettle them and they will replant vineyards and they will drink the wine that's growing there and they will make gardens and eat the fruit of their gardens and I will plant these people on their land and they will not be taken away anymore from their land that I have given to them. So says, so says the Lord your God. This concludes this beautiful book of Amos. It was a pleasure studying it together with you, and thank you for joining us. Looking forward to studying the next of the 12 
Minor Prophets, which is the Prophet Ovadia. Thank you so much.